Hello and welcome to this Open University video tutorial designed to supplement the module T189 Digital Photography. In the second part of this tutorial on importing images into Adobe Lightroom, we're going to take a look at importing photos directly from your camera. You can connect your camera to Lightroom in one of three ways. Firstly, you can connect it directly to your computer using a USB cable. Secondly, you can use an external card reader which allows you to insert the card from your camera and read directly from that. Thirdly, many computers now have card readers built in, such as this one here. This is the method I'm using and I think it's generally the best and quickest approach. From a reliability point of view, if you don't have a card reader built into your computer, I'd advise buying a special external card reader. They're not very expensive and they can be very useful, especially if you have an older camera or perhaps you've lost the cable to connect to your camera. I'm going to click on the import button. The import window has now opened and at the top you can see that the source is automatically set to the camera card, which is typically called no name. As before, we have options up here to choose the type of import that we want. I'm going to choose copy because I want Lightroom to copy the files from my card onto my computer and then catalog them. Underneath, we have all the images on my card. There are 250 photographs here and they're all ticked, which means they're selected and ready to import. On the right hand panel, we have the file handling options. Don't import suspected duplicates. I'm not going to make a second copy, but this is one method you could use to back up your photos. I can use this section here to rename my photos. You can see that their current names are the naming convention that the camera uses, which doesn't really describe the image very well. I'm going to choose to rename all the files. And here I'm going to choose the naming convention of custom name with a numerical sequence. To specify the custom name, I can type it in here. So I'm going to call these Hidcoat, as they were taken at Hidcoat Manor. I'll start the sequence with number one, and I'll leave the extension as JPEG. I don't normally advise changing this. You can see it will show you a new sample of what the new file name will look like. I'm not going to apply any development settings. We'll look in more detail at these presets later in the module. And for now, I'll choose no metadata. The next box is for keywords. In week seven of the module, you'll see a lot more information on tagging and classifying your images, and keywords form an important part of this process. As I have all my images selected in one place here, I'm going to choose some keywords to apply to all the images. This will help me to find these specific images, especially if I end up with thousands of images in my library after a few years of photography. I'm going to type National Trust. You'll notice that as soon as I start typing, I get some suggestions based on the first letter, N. These are because I've used these keywords before. If this is your first ever import into Lightroom, you won't see these, so just carry on typing the full keyword. After each keyword, you divide them by inserting a comma, and then I can add my next keyword, Hidcoat Manor. Most of these photos are actually flowers or fauna. You can see I've not used that keyword before, so I've got to type in the whole thing. I think that will do for this set of photos. Next, I go down to the destination. This is the location on your computer to which Lightroom will copy your files. I want my photos to go in the T189 files subfolder, which I've previously created in the pictures folder on my computer. Because there are a lot of files and they're all related to each other, I'm going to put them into a new subfolder up here. Lightroom can create this folder for you on your computer and all you need to do is tell Lightroom what to call it. So I'm calling it Hidcoat Manor. As you can see, it's now created the new folder here inside the T189 files folder. I'm now ready to import all these images, so I'll click Import. You can see a progress bar appear at the top here showing you the progress. This will take a little while as there are lots of photos you can see the photo slowly appearing in the library module down here. It's going to take a few minutes, so let's fast forward. Here we are, the import has nearly finished. There we go, task completed. I now have all these photos imported onto my computer and catalogued into Lightroom. I'll click on one photo 
and on the right here you can see the keyword tags that we added during the import process. I can click on any image and those keywords will have been applied to them all. You'll also notice that in the file name section, this one is number 14, number 15, number 16. So it's numbered them all in sequence. The next thing I like to do is go through and choose the images that I definitely don't want to keep. This might be because they're out of focus or overexposed, or perhaps I took a few of the same subject and only one or two are worth keeping. I'll double click the first photo, which enlarges the preview, allowing me to see things in more detail. And then I'll just use the right arrow key on my keyboard to run through the images. This one is out of focus, and I don't want it. I'm going to press the X key on my keyboard, which marks it as rejected. I might be able to work with that. I like this one. I don't like that. This one doesn't work at all very well for me, so I'll reject that, and that. As you progress through, you might find some images that aren't oriented correctly. I can choose the quick rotate buttons here to correct that. If you reject an image by accident, you can use the U key to undo the rejection, like so. It's going to take a few minutes, so let's fast forward. Once I finish rejecting the images that I don't want, I'll return to the grid view. You'll see some of the thumbnails here have gone very pale in appearance. These are the ones that I selected for rejection. If I now go to Photo, Delete Rejected Photos, you'll see that I get an opportunity to delete the 71 rejected photos. I get a choice here to remove them from the Lightroom catalogue or delete them from disk, which will delete the files from your hard disk. I know I'm never going to want these photos again, so I'm going to choose to delete them from the disk to completely remove them. This will save space on my computer hard disk. And we're left now with just the images that I wanted to keep. The next thing would be for you to go through them individually and add some keywords that are more unique. For instance, down here I had a photo of a grass snake. I can select that and add a suitable keyword over here. Something like that. If I go to the next photo, I can select this keyword selections panel here and you can see it lists some of the recently used keywords. I can simply click the grass snake here and it automatically adds that as a keyword. This helps to speed up the keywording process. You can use these keywords to filter your images, which can be very useful when you're looking for one specific image amongst the thousands that you might have in your library after a few years of photography. For a more in-depth tutorial on these features, along with how you can use filters in Lightroom to find specific images in your library, we've provided a link on the module website to an excellent Adobe TV video, and I highly recommend that you watch this. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.